Hello, Internet, and welcome back to Antiheroes Anonymous, or welcome for the first time if it's your first time joining us. Let me just adjust camera slightly. Actually, Kay, if you could scoot towards Nick a little bit. Yeah, that's perfect. Right. Both of you were, like, at the edge of the screen. Um, <laughs> like you do. So, I'm Ethan, and I'm the Dungeon Master for this 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons show. Um, we play streaming on Twitch every Monday at 7 p.m. Pacific time, and then post the episodes to YouTube the following Wednesday. Throughout the show, we use a variety of custom items and even a custom wild magic table uh, for our resident wild magic sorcerer, who I guess we should introduce. Uh, for our <laughs> introductions. Hi, I'm Nick. I play Thaddeus, the human paladin of Asanahan. Hi, I'm Kay. I play the resident wild magic sorcerer. <laughs> Harmony the tiefling. <laughs> With the wild magic With table. With the wild, wild magic table. <laughs> I am Alyssa. I play the resident pirate, Mara. <laughs> okay. I'm Zach, and I play Hunter, who's a warforged fighter. Ranger. Ooh. Uh, and I will get back in the groove of things soon, I swear. <laughs> um, All this time off. What's our happening? music comes from Battle Bards, Tabletop Audio, and Incompetech, so if you're interested in any of that um, and are watching us on Twitch, you can check the channel page for links and info. Uh, conversely, if you're watching us on YouTube, you can go ahead and check the video description for a similar amount of information. Uh, then, if you still need more information, you can follow us on Twitter at Antiheroes Anon, which you can find a link to both on the Twitter page and on the YouTube page. And the Twitch page. And, oh, I meant to say, yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. You all know what I mean. Uh, we have we? A, no, <laughs> a selection of new character bio cards, which are up in the upper right-hand corner. Uh, so if you're following along, you can get within a span of, I think, four minutes or so, get information on all of the characters, a little bit of um, what they're about. Then, we're back after the holiday, so we should be on a regular streaming schedule now, right? Yep, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, other than that, enjoy the show, share with your friends, and definitely come back uh, more. Um, so, a little bit of recap about what's been going on before we dive right on in. Um, the party spent time recuperating in their tower, uh, talking to their companions and working on their projects after having uh, jumped to the Feywild after a very, very, very long and difficult fight. Um, when they were about to leave the Feywild, however, a Fey creature ran through the camp and stole uh, some spell components and uh, also a very precious sword of Thaddeus's. Um, and the spell components that were stolen were those specifically that were needed to go home. Mm -hmm. uh, so the party began to track. They uh, summoned a yet hound and employed oh, yeah. his services to uh, track the fey creature through the heartwood. Um, they ran in, into a family of owl bears and almost startled them. Um, they found some interesting fauna of the fey wild, which were these uh, flowers that sprouted into colorful uh, campfires. Um, and then at the very end of their travels through the heartwood, they came out of the forest and found uh, right on the edge of the forest, there's this big pit. Um, and the pit was surrounded by these uh, stone monoliths um, with holes in them that the wind was whistling through and creating almost like a, a musical melody, which was accompanied by uh, this drum beat created by uh, two separate sources. Um, one, three pairs of stamping goat-like feet at the bottom of the pit, um, which belong to these hairy, hairy, hairy creatures with uh, gray skin and almost... Uh... Yeah, yeah, that's, that's about them. Um, they've got like mustaches and things. They're just super hairy. Um, and then the other source of the drum beating sound was these two uh, giant stone uh, drumsticks that were beating on the rock itself that's down in the center of the pit. Um, and two of these creatures, but specifically the two that are dancing around the center rock, are holding uh, your stolen items. So one of them is holding Gavin's tuning forks, and then another one is holding Thaddeus' uh, moon blade. And the, they are just dancing around in circles to the beat of this drumming and uh, melodic music created by the stone monoliths. And that was the scene you came upon. 
So. Who's doing the job? Uh, it's almost as you've seen animated objects before. Uh -huh. It's kind of like that. The uh, okay. these large stone drumsticks are just pounding on the rock okay. with no seeming force behind them. Hey, Thaddy, I think we found your sword. I can see it from here. <clears throat> Wish I could dance like that. <laughs> Why don't you go down there and try? Maybe you can, I don't. Maybe you, you can know, steal them back. Something about joining a dance in the Feywild sounds really dangerous to me. I'm not sure that's a great idea. But it might be a way that she could steal them back. How far away are they hands. from us? Uh, well, in terms of horizontal distance, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55 to 60 feet ish. Um, but in terms of vertical distance, this pit descends maybe 60, 70 feet down. I'm going to lean over to Hunter and say, I'll lean back. You're really good at shooting things out of people's hands. Can if I you can get go? that guy to drop the sword, I can use Mage Hand to grab it and bring it back. Um,. Then I'll like look at the guy the guys on there like I don't know if I wanna kill them though. Well, I mean, you can aim for his hand, right? Well, I don't know if I can like mitigate the damage though, right? Uh no. Yeah. He would take he would some do, damage. like full damage. Like when you cause someone to drop something, it, like, it means shoot you're shooting, the shooting them in the hand and they can't hold on to like it. This. So, so? <laughs> you don't have any more potions flying, do you, Harmony? No. No, I have a Someone did fire recently breathing. contain the ability to fly, though. <laughs> That's right. I could fly. I could use my mage hand to, like, somebody bring the rope over really, really far <laughs> to get back yeah. out. That's true. Gavin, meanwhile, is flipping through his notebook, uh, and he finds a page that has a sketch of something that looks like these creatures. Um, oops. And he starts reading that a little bit, and he just sort of mutters occasional things like, uh, connected to the earth, uh, good at finding gems and other materials. And he just keeps and I'll, I'll sort of like <laughs> cover, <laughs> all I cover over may I find anything important. He's, he's, hold on, give me a second. Don't, just don't read over my shoulder. Right. Get out of here. Mm. And then he's just kind of like muttering to himself as he reads so, the Wikipedia article on these guys. <laughs> I'm going to observe these guys, and I'd like to use Know Your Enemy on them. Okay. Uh, remind me uh, so if what I spend... information you want to get from that. Okay. Um, so I can get two of the following characteristics, but I'm going to choose uh, current hit points and total class levels, if any. Okay. And how many hit points do you have? 100. Uh, they have more hit points than you do. Um, okay. So you don't have to worry about killing him if you knock the sword out. That's true. You'd be totally fine. Well, they're tiny. Totally fine. Like they're the size of like a halfling or. Um, but strangely robust. Like a, like a kobold. <laughs> You've seen kobolds before. Uh huh. Uh, but they do. <laughs> yeah, there's something about the way that they move that is powerful. Like when they stamp their feet, the ground trembles around them a little bit. Okay. Um, I could try to paralyze him. So the advantage on and then him. total class levels you said is a no. they don't have any class okay. levels. Yeah, yeah well, looking so at them, it doesn't look like they have any specific martial okay. training or anything like that. Um, they do have uh, sort of like attached to their hips. They've got what looks to be some like rudimentary clubs. Um, do they see us standing here? They don't seem to be paying you any attention. They're very no. absorbed in their dance. I'll I'll reiterate to the party and say that they look strangely familiar or strangely formidable for their stature and size. So shooting him with an arrow shouldn't well, you shouldn't worry about killing him. Yeah, that, that will provoke a fight. That would provoke, yeah, exactly. I mean, I thought them stealing your sword is the provoking of the fight. They already well, they definitely provoke something, but I think I think that Mar should try to take them back. Well, let's see if Gavin. That finds Mar should try to take it back. Yeah. Valerie then she's pipes up and says, sneak. "How is she supposed to sneak. get across this thing? Well, this have, trench. Do I still have? Uh, let's see. We have someone who can make someone invisible. I could make him invisible. I can climb down with the uh, what do you call those grappling hooks? Do you need to though? You said it was just sixty and it's, sixty, right? Yeah, it's, it's just, I mean, it's a very. Steep I mean, if you thing, jump you 60, climb down. Take oh, damage. okay. It's like forty-five degree angle. It's yeah, not, it's not like a." Cliff. Like a sheer. Because yeah. I'm, I'm really a sneaky. I could probably, if they, especially if they're not paying attention, I could probably sneak down. And but grab he's holding stuff. it in his hand. Valerie says, 
and I can... Mara, if you're going to attempt to go down and take something out of one of their hands, I could go for a simultaneous attempt and try and take something out of the other person's hands. I can make you both invisible. I, I was about to say, I think the only reservation I have about that is that it'd be easy to detect us going down with you. But if we're invisible, that could be. I can, yeah, I can make people. Well, well, I think they're going to be paying a lot of attention if they lose their. Uh, Valerie, have quiet. Their can you be? Very quiet. Let's try. Um, well, let's see if Gavin, Gavin then speaks up yeah. and says, "There's not a lot of information on these guys. Um, the most information I can find is that we're probably observing a. Uh, it's, it's a frequent thing that they do. They they come to the surface and they." Uh, do these dances almost ritualistically. Um, this book says they can go on for weeks. And we don't want them to be stuck here for weeks waiting right. for your sword, right? We don't have that kind of time. And All right, get... I'm going to put my one hand on Mara's shoulder, mm -hmm. and I'm going to look at, at uh, Valerie. Valerie. I was like, Vanessa? No, oh. Valerie. And just be like... <laughs> like <laughs> awkwardly on her arm. Mm-hmm. And I'll cast invisibility on you too. Okay. Yes, yes. So you can increase the number of targets just by scaling up the spell. Yeah, yeah. So if I cast it at a third level, I can I can do both. That's of them. what I thought. I would so do. the other option is maybe they're okay with trading Seven. some other mundane items as little drumsticks and stuff, and then we can just give them. Some, and we don't have to actually yeah, throw guys, them back. What What do we have? Because I can sure swap it out. Yeah, we could try that. So that way. What do we have that we're willing to? Uh... Oh, lots of, lots of stuff. Yeah, I've got some javelins. Like, I'd be willing to part with a couple of javelins. Might be. So, like, like a crowbar might be similar to a tuning fork. Oh, you're looking for something to, some, to like the take Indiana Jones position? made to swap out. Yeah. I see. <laughs> Valerie ruffles around in her like small pack that she has, um, and she pulls out like a spoon and a fork. This ought to work for the tuning forks, I suppose. <laughs> Okay, I have, so I have I'll five you, short swords. Give me swords. A, a javelin, yeah. Okay. I, I have five short swords. Keep it. We're okay. covered. We're yeah, I like this. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Alright, go. You're invisible for an hour. Go. Okay. okay. Uh, so Mara and Valerie sneak on down. Which one do you want to sneak towards? Either one. Oh, well, I need the one that's got the sword because I've got the javelin. I guess I should put on the map so that I'm not just okay. playing with <laughs> playing. empty space. Just leaving the camera. There we go. There's the hanging. The theater of the mind. Um, <clears throat> Is that Valerie? Yeah, that's the best I could find for Valerie. <laughs> <laughs> Valerie's not blonde, but it works. Um, so, as you creep on down slowly, I need a stealth roll from you added. They're invisible. They're invisible. They're invisible. Just make a stealth roll. Um, 22. Nice. Very nice. And Mar or, um, not Mara. Respectable. Valerie gets... Way better than I would do. Where are you going? Valerie gets an 18. Okay, so you both sneak down. And these creatures still seem to be dancing around. They haven't paid, like turned to pay you any attention, so you think you've snuck up on them pretty well. Okay. Uh, so next, I need a sleight of hand check to try and you I have double proficiency. Which yeah. is going yes. to help you quite a bit. So I just add a little bit whatever it is, right? So it's... Where's your sleight of hand? Here. That says yeah, 12. 12. 12? Why does it say 11? Because, well, this is... It's double proficiency, right? So, so it's 4 so plus, plus double proficiency. So 4, four plus four, 4, so it's 12. Yeah. Okay. This is old. That's not yeah, right. that's old. Yeah. So that's 12. And if, will, roll, if you roll lower than 10, then it's... Uh, oh, wait, no! Wait, 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 what, what, oh, what'd no! What'd you roll? A 1? Well, oh, wait, yeah, you have your thing. 10. Oh, that's right! Oh, yeah, because you're so you good. Because you have your new thing. Oh, yeah, really that's right. right. Actually, oh, thank it. goodness. It's a 22. That's good right. call. Yeah, I totally forgot about that, too. Okay, oh. so you got a 22 total? <laughs> a 22 um, out of 1! <laughs> yeah. You awesome. wait perfectly for there's this moment where he, like... As he's doing like a twirl, he tosses the blade up in the air, and you aim for that moment where you snag it up out of the air, yes. and then toss the javelin, and it becomes visible uh, as soon as it leaves your hand, and then it catches the javelin and seems to keep dancing. Yes. Um, on the other side of the pit, um, you can see 
just barely across the rock. You can see that um, one of the tuning forks in his hands is lifted out and quickly replaced with a, sp a silver spoon. Um, and then there's a couple seconds that go by, and I had Valerie roll twice instead of once. She succeeded the first time, but not the second time. Oh, no! uh, you see that she the second tuning fork comes up a little bit, and then the creature seems to like notice that something is happening and clenches hard on it. Um, and can I? Would she have to? Yeah. Hmm? Would she have to make an opposed strength check? Um, I'll, I'll give it to her. I assume we're watching this happen. Yeah. Like, even though all we can see is the, the thing. Let's see. They have a very high strength. They have a dice. Can I um? Can I make? If I'm seeing her struggle, can I cast Mage Hand and flick him in the forehead <laughs> to oh, try and assist her? Uh, <laughs> Surprise him into like releasing his grip. What is the range on Mage Hand? 150 feet. Then yes. No, it's 30 feet. Oh, okay. You can bend luck though, right? <laughs> I well, could bend increase luck, the distance. No. Um, but that's for something check, else. If they do a strength okay. check, I thought it was. I thought it was farther. Then I'll do. With the Fuck. opposed strength, you can see that Valerie is like pulling on it, and like you can't see Valerie, but yeah, you can yeah. see that something is pulling on it. Um, but it's holding tight to it, and then not only does it hold tight to it, it reaches for its club and Shit. smacks at Valerie. Can I? Okay. Uh, hitting. Okay. I can't do that. I want to throw the sword. Up. For you to catch to get it out of there so, so they don't get it. That's a long way. They don't get it. Can you? Um... Mage can't catch it. No. <laughs> no. How do I get it out of there? I don't want it on me anymore. Um, and okay. though Valerie is still invisible, you see a spurt of um, blood go flying out across the pit, and oh, then no. also uh, maybe a tooth or two. Oh God! Oh. As it just yeah. caught her right under the chin. Um, and I need initiative. Why am I not oh. sad? <laughs> you should, you should have Do done you all still have our initiative you have, you cards, have, Ethan? You're or? so good at it. I don't think I have yours. I think I gave them back. Yeah, I have mine. Well. Well. I've got. Wait, so, you no, know, I don't have mine. I don't have mine either. Yeah, yeah, I, I haven't mine. either. I might have them somewhere, but let's do temporary ones we for now. We can make ones. No, Delightless Hunter. <laughs> Oh, I have. Okay. Crap. Well. Okay. I was like, oh, I can do this. Nope. I'm concentrating on their invisibility. Okay, so I add this That's to not this, great. right? Huh? Um, add this so that's another thing of note: yep, yep. Okay. when the great club struck her, it was like, without hesitation, it knew exactly where she was. Wow. Uh, so it didn't, didn't seem to be affected by the invisibility. Mm -hmm. I know, right? <laughs> Mine's better. When you've got all four of those, go ahead and hand them up to me. Oh, come on. <laughs> I, I rolled a four. She did, she rolled really well. <laughs> Where's, uh, my initiative? He's still working on it. He's drawing a picture on his card instead of actually. I'm done. <laughs> Have a six. Just have to. Well, fuck. All right. Well, <laughs> I mean, Melissa drew a picture too, and so did Kay. So. <laughs> so did Everyone. But mine was wasn't elaborate. <laughs> mine was just. Well, okay. Needless to say, Mara's up first. <laughs> yeah. You think? Okay. Wow, Miss Reliable Talent. Yeah, Shit. I rolled. I rolled four. We can't have a fish ball. <sighs> Okay, so no, no, no. But it, Actually, she's got a plus six. Wait, right? I don't get, I don't get initiative bonuses. So they, as... they... <laughs> oh wait, do I as a ranger? You, if you're, you are should, you the uh, have advantage, advantage right? on initiative. Oh, hang on a second. Reroll and let me know what it is. Oh, oh. twenty-one. <laughs> <laughs> Mara still goes first. What? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> but Hunter is second. Yes. All right. So I think what I want to do is get out my rope and try to lasso that little sucker. So, oh, the one next to Valerie. Yeah. Try okay. To, try to. Try
tie it up. So are all of them stopping their dance and fighting, uh, or just that one? No, it it almost seems like he intends to continue you dancing while he fights. Sword, like right? he's still going through motions and holding this club. Put it in my bag. Um, huh. Yep. So, I, I put so you're still sword invisible. In my bag. So you yeah, could, but it seems like that didn't matter much. But he's still but... dancing. Okay. So you but could try and. I don't want to kill it. I know you can really... try and swap it. The other one, and then because he out. still has one of the tuning forks yeah. that we need. Oh, so that okay. last one, we're okay. two for three right now. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, then I'll get out my. Uh, what did I want to change it with? My crowbar. Uh huh. And and he's but he's really gripping it hard still, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Just whack him on the hand with the crowbar. <laughs> so you want to run over to him? Yeah. First. Okay. Do you want to use your bonus action to disengage or just run? To just yeah disengage. So we get over there. All right. Um, I'm trying to go back in the to make him slack. He can't see me. I mean, you can just try it in my back, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll see if I can grab it. Okay. It's, or maybe I'll wait and see if he tries to throw it up like the other guy did when he's, since he's dancing still. Okay. Um, so you want to, like, hold an action in case he tosses it up yeah. in the middle of the dance? Okay. That you can do. Um, then, punch it. It looks like Mara's over there biding her time. For some well, time. she's uh, invisible. We, 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 oh, yeah, that's, that's right. But we have, well, I figured that we were using the earpieces. You could use the earpieces. Yeah, so I was, that's why I was, I, sorry, when I was talking, I, I meant to say I was communicating to you using the earpiece. Okay. So Our that's why I'm like, we're still two for three. Don't kill him. Mm -hmm. uh, and then so if you responded and said, okay, I'll do this thing, then I will hold an action. I can't see where Valerie is. I know she's hurt, but I can't help So her. I'm going to I'm gonna hold an action. If they are hostile her. and start like, attacking either of those two, then I'm going to use, I'm going to hold a can I hold a maneuver, like a disarming strike attack? Because it's an attack, right? And it's then I get to add a maneuver to it. To your attack. Okay, so I'm gonna hold an attack so, yeah. action then on him, and I I'm think gonna make it a disarm. When you make your attack action, you can yeah. do that. Okay, I'm gonna do that. Okay. Uh, then it is Valerie's turn. I think she'll make another <laughs> attempt at trying to swap it out. Uh, wow, Valerie, roll higher, please. I know you're supposed to be so amazing, Valerie. Um, I'll let her use Dex to try and swap it out, I think. Uh, it's, it's plus four instead of plus zero, but it's still not enough. Uh, he's holding on to it tight. Um, and you can see a blood trail that sort of goes off this way. Okay. As she gets a little bit of distance away from the thing. Uh, then... It is Gavin's turn. Um, let's see if Gavin can do anything to actually help the situation. Most of Gavin's spells are charm things which will not work on fake creatures. Gavin looks to you guys and says, Are we going to try and fight to get them back? What's going on? What's the plan? So I told Mara to try and swap the last one because we're two for three right now. All right. Well, I have one thing that might be able to help. Okay. Uh, and he will go and cast a spell. So I can make a save for the... Does he exclaim what spell he's using? Firebolt! He does not. Um, <laughs> but the Korid rolls an 18 and <laughs> exceeds his spell save, so it doesn't matter. Okay. Um, and Gavin Harmony's just goes... going to snort really derisively. Gavin just goes, Ah, the nine hells, and just curses um that it didn't work uh then be careful what you wish for it is the uh Korid's turn and as they continue to dance around oh shit so mara the one that you were next to moved away from you uh, you could use your reaction to attack it, if you wanted, as it goes away. Okay, while it passes me, I think I'll stomp on its foot and see if I can get it to drop the... Okay, yeah, you could make that attempt instead of making an attack. So. Make an unarmed strike? Yeah. Do 
You need to roll the hit first here. <laughs> this one first? Yeah. Oh, roll it. Okay. Yeah. I got a, a 15 plus the hit. Plus that. Okay, 20. Okay, that hits. Oh, okay, so, so that's now you that. roll your damage. Yep. Four damage. Mm-hmm. All right. Bludgeoning <laughs> her foot on my foot on his foot <laughs> on your foot. Ow, my foot. <laughs> um, I rolled a strength save for him, and I didn't set the DC high, uh, but I rolled a two, <laughs> so he drops the other fork. Yay! Okay. Um, okay. Um, grab it. Put it in my knapsack real quick. Okay. Uh, and then he sort of continues to dance away. Um, as they're dancing, however. Um, Something else begins to happen around the field. Oh, no. Where those stone monoliths were, they were like uh, these stone monoliths that had these circular spots in them that the wind was howling through and creating music. Um, oh, dear. The stone monoliths begin to rise up out of the ground, and you can see that they are actually sitting on top of these boulder-like creatures. And then as the boulder-like creatures come up out of the ground, they sort of shrug off the monoliths oh, onto the ground. Um, we just talked about We did? <laughs> We're just talking about stone palaces. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh. Do they, like, r- roll into the ground and grab an arm and oh, get the other arm? Oh, man, they look like them, too. Uh, let me see. I think they can only summon one per turn, so yes. That is all three of their actions. Then it is Harmony's turn. Ah. Well, we have, and then, did you say anything after you, or did we notice that she grabbed it? Oh, yeah, I guess I would well, tell, we would have, I would we tell would the scene that I got it. Maybe. Okay. Should we just get out of here, then? Yeah. All right. Get out of there. Are, are we... Are we... Did, are we did, not fighting these things? Did you still have... Could Why? she still move? We got after our stuff her uh, She... That was a reaction. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She helped her turn, yeah. and then it moved away. Yeah, okay. Um, all right. Uh, <laughs> I think I will... Hold an action. Okay. Um, I'm gonna cast hold monster on anything that tries to attack Mara when okay. she's making her escape. No deal. That's so my that's held action. Your held action. Okay. Then it's Thaddeus' turn. Uh, Thaddeus can see that she can't, I mean, he can't see Mara or Valley, but he can see that none of these hairy creatures are holding anything that we want, right? Right. He can see that the things that they're holding have been replaced with a javelin and a uh, spoon and a fork, which have now been dropped in favor of the Great Claw. Okay. But all the stuff we have has been, has been picked up. Yes. Like, mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Um... Why don't you jump down and give me, get me, and jump me back up? <laughs> I don't think you have that much movement, though. I don't think I can reach you. They'll see us, that's right. Yeah, I can reach you. Um, <laughs> what is the range? Yeah. Okay, I, I can come fly in. Yeah, fly over. I'll make helicopter yeah. noises and I'll come down. Long <laughs> ranges. Um, yeah, I think it's just time to go, honestly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. That is ready as an action, and, it, and the action is to to move, and the trigger is if anything comes towards us. Okay. Um, but otherwise, I want to give my allies the benefit of my aura. I see. Right, right. Um, and that says, I think we, we should escape. You guys first, I'll leave. Okay. We can't leave without Mara. Okay. There, I'm not worried about it. It is Mara's turn now. They're, they're invisible, they have everything they need. They're okay, yeah. I'll leave. Okay, Quietly. so you want to... How do you want to spend your cunning action? That's the important part. You could dash and get farther, or you could disengage and not risk getting hit. Um, I think I'm going to dash because I'm pretty quiet. Yeah. If you, you want to go back this uh-huh, way? To join the group. If, you, if she moves, then dashes, then dashes, you could probably get to us in there. I'll use your action dash and your bonus action. Yeah. 60 gets you about there. 
and then your full action would put you there. Yes. Um, but that one is going if to... If I seem to me, I'm casting Hold Monster. That's right. Um, he does take a swing, but I'll let your spell go first. Because I was holding it. Yep. Hold Monster! She's now visible, though. Invisibility will drop for both of them. It is a... what kind of save? Uh... Wisdom. And the DC is 17. Giant hand. That is so I rolled a 16. I really so want... he is help. What's, the, cannot... yeah, what's the bonus? Thank you. Thank you. Huh? Oh, that's the, that's that was with it. the bonus. Yeah, it was 14 oh, plus 2. I was like, no! <laughs> I thought you meant on die. Right. Nope. So, yep, okay. He's held in place. Cool. He's you held. That. You can use that better than I can I anyway. Need this. Anyway. I need this. No wild magic. Um. Mara and Valerie are now vis visible because invisibility had to be dropped for that. But it doesn't matter for Mara. It matters more for, for Valerie. Mm -hmm. Like we care. Uh, then it is Hunter's turn. <laughs> okay. Um... <clears throat> I guess we're waiting for Valerie, so. I will. Hold another attack action in case anything attacks us, I suppose. Okay. With your bow or with your sword? With my bow. Uh, Valerie is going to try and get to you. Almost. Makes it pretty close. Uh, she's still in the pit. <laughs> then it is Gavin's turn. Um, Gavin... Uh, what can't we have that's actually useful against these guys? Um, yeah, he'll try again with old monster. Oh, is that what he was trying to do before too? Yep. <laughs> I would have recognized that too because it's a spell I cast all the time. It succeeds again, and Kevin's like, "Ah, screw these guys." <laughs> He's very angry. <laughs> I'm just laughing now because I I did it and he did it. Meanwhile. <laughs> oh dear. Gavin, you have that fork back, right? Yeah, I gave him one. Mara has the other one. Oh dear. So they are coming. Okay. Front roll. So my all action doesn't go off, right? Because it didn't technically attack us. Well, not yet. And was it specifically any one of us, or was it... Yeah, I said us, but... Not that I don't know if it matters. Are those more of the same? No. I think it's time to get out of here, you um, guys. What you see happen now is they each uncoil from their hips these iron-like ropes. Oh dear. Um, and they seem to, as they're dancing, be able to mentally command these ropes to move in Valerie's direction. Oh dear. Uh, let's see what... Move up to 30 feet. Oh, move up to 30 feet. No, up to 20 feet. Okay. Yep, so none of them can reach Valerie yet. Um, however, Mara is going to get uh, bowled into by one of these boulder creatures, and so is Valerie, as they just basically um, like pull on. Goron like, roll. Yeah, Goron roll. <laughs> <laughs> That's one hundred percent what happens. So is that is that their attack from the start? Like they're just rolling. Yeah. At us? Okay, so can my, one of my can my action go off then? Sure, you can hit one of these two as it's or so I'm gonna rolling shoot. towards you. Yeah, so I'm gonna use an attack on the one that's going towards Valerie because she's in the most peril right now. Okay. And. Uh, so let's see, against Mara, so that is attack. a 29. 29 will hit, okay. easily. And I'm going to make that a trip attack. So he has to make a DC 18 strength save, I believe. No, he fails. Okay, so... I'd like to... <laughs> 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 So he, he has like a burnout, and he's like... <laughs> <laughs> trip attack so it makes him fall prone, right? So yeah, I so... have to recalculate his distance he can roll then, because that makes it so he has to get up and use half his speed. Yeah. Uh, Maybe his eyesight is bad. 
30. You can only get up to there, actually. Okay, you can't even cool. get to Valerie. All right. That's good. You did one for me, right? What? You held an empty one for me. I, I held that monster. Oh, okay. So, that's... so he couldn't attack you when you were running away. Um, they paralyzed him. So. 19 piercing. Okay. Okay. I think that is still actually health go. Because you can move if they came close. Yes, it would. Um, just one other thing I just remembered. The one that couldn't quite get to you is going to use his action for something other than an attack, which is that a another boulder right next to oh, Gavin shit. animates. Oh shit. Oh. Um, this one looks like, it doesn't seem to have any sentience to it, it just sort of is like a boulder that rises up out of the ground. Mm. Um, and misses Gavin spectacularly, I think. Good. <laughs> That's eight. Okay. Oh, actually it hits Gavin. Gavin has an armor class of 11. I was gonna say, he's a freaking yeah. magic user. Yeah, but it also rolled like and he's a, a six, boy. so I thought it was a miss, but no. Okay. So Gavin takes what looks like a pretty heavy punch. Um, and then that is the turn. So then it's Harmony's turn. Right. Oh, uh, right. Yeah. Where did you want um, to run? That just wants to move toward Valerie and grab her hand. I was going to do that, so. Yeah. Good. Go set it up. And looks back at, at Gavin expectantly. Uh, what? Like, are you like you're expecting him to do something, or just like, like... cast plane shift? Oh, like, okay. Oh, I see. Like now is the time. So can cast plane shift. Okay. Uh, then. Well, I'm glad you said that because I I wouldn't have come and joined yeah. your hand. Harmony. It's not what I was planning to do. I thought we were running. How long does it take to cast sense, plane shift? Well, okay. In a sense, we are running. <laughs> okay, I guess we're going back home now, you guys. Where's the old okay. man? Uh, back at the edge of. No, he'd be here with you. With us. Yep. He's just like just hanging out in terror at like all these things that are happening, like wide eyed. Right, since I'm his babysitter, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Rolling hands again, old man. Okay, 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 okay. Um, um, what am I doing? I it's am. It's your turn. Yeah. Yeah, it's my turn. Do we all have to be joining? We all have to join hands. We all in have circle. to join hands in a circle. Oh, crap. <laughs> okay, we can do it. I don't think joining hands there is a good idea. I'm gonna say, Thaddy, let's put some distance between us and them before we do this. I mean, on my turn, I will. <laughs> let's. <laughs> I'm gonna grab Gavin. Uh huh. And I'm gonna say, you're gonna owe me big time for this. And I'm gonna dimension door us. How far away? That's the question. Because these guys, these motherfuckers, can move. They can. How much? How far can you guys run? I know she's fast. If I cast haste on myself, I can. You can get haste, and you've also got misty step, right? Right. So it's just a matter. Can you misty step with somebody? Hunter. No, no. that's like why I'm using haste instead. I see. Right. You can just throw her over your shoulder. Right. Book it. All right. Um. Oh, fuck. All right. Meet you guys at the campfire flower, and I'll dimension door campfire back flower. the way okay. we came. Back toward oh, okay. the fire flower things. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. I don't want to go so far into the heartwood that it's like, takes a day and a half to catch up to me. So, just don't is go there... into the heartwood, then. It's gonna do that. I know, just, but. Go somewhere, just go that way. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that way is. Would Harmony think of that? Uh, I'm gonna well, tell you, go I know that way, I'm Harmony. not gonna go into the, into the woods. I'm just. just I want to get out of. Woods. Yeah, yeah, I just want to get out of range of That's these fine. guys. So the edge of the woods is maybe like 100 feet? Yeah, away. and so, not too far that they can't so catch up feet. to me in a turn. Okay. So 100 feet yeah, 100, go to the edge away. Of the there we go. Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> then it is you were going to owe me for this when I grab Gavin. Okay. Oof. Uh, I'm also going to, sorry, after we teleport, I'm going to slap a healing potion into his hand. Okay, uh, he takes it and says, uh, thanks. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Thaddeus casts haste, um, picks up Valerie. Just picks her up, okay. Does she resist? Uh, like, initially, but once she sort of catches on to what you're doing, she lets it happen. Okay. And then I'm gonna move, and then move again. So that's gonna be 120 feet of movement? Yeah, carrying Valerie, your movement's gonna be halved, though. Ah, so it'll be... but I wear the boots of strength. That's true. 
Hey, Cumberland says in Fleming now. That's true. Okay, yep, you're fine. So, <laughs> oh, you get, so you yeah. can catch up to us. So we got our road run out here. <laughs> That's a good combination. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Um, then it is Mara's turn. So, uh, and Mara, you can move up to 90 feet. Yeah, did turn. I get hurt by that, by that mm -hmm. boulder guy? Uh, no, he rolled a natural one. He missed you. Oh, okay, he missed. <laughs> all right, so... But you have to not disengage. If you use all of your all of your moves to move, and move 90 feet to catch up to us, mm -hmm. you can't use your cunning action to disengage. Okay, so you're gonna what, have to risk what would it. Uncanny Dodge do for you, though? Uncanny Dodge would give them it's... disadvantage on attacks to hit you. Oh, yeah. okay. Alright. Or halves damage or something. I think that that's Does evasion. It no, well, I think they both are half damage. Evasion is, is for AoE attacks. Oh, okay, 96. that's right, that's right. So, Uncanny Dodge will have a melee attack? Or yeah, a yeah, attack, yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and then Evasion would have it's just, dex save. Yes. Or make it so you... Yes. Have, or if you succeed, then nothing. Yes. Yeah, starting... Yep, use your reaction to have the damage, so it's not enforcing okay. disadvantage. So yeah, you could use that if he hits you. Okay, so then I'll move. So dash, dash, dash. Dash, dash, dash. So you're going to not, you're going to risk the opportunity attack. Yep. So you can get away. Uh, but let's oh, see if you take any damage. Uh, maybe. Does 20 do your armor class? Yeah. Yeah. So now you can uncanny dodge it. Okay. Uh, you take, if I can do math, that'd be great. Uh, 13 points of bludgeoning damage have down to six. six. So you only take six. Because you uncannily dodge out of the way, and there it only go. clips your side as you... A glancing blow. Away. A glancing blow. Hunter? Um, Critically. So I need to get away too. You're the only one here by the pit now. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to climb? Yes! My voice is like 20 though. So <laughs> but you'd be out of range. They're rocks. They're rocks. How fast? Three. Well, you two. saw him. He just rolled across the entire. Yeah, he also, you would have noticed they rolled faster on the downhill, but then once they got to the uphill, they slowed down a bit. So I could uh, action surge, like quad, like triple dash. <laughs> yeah, do that. Do that. So that all, give me... Are we all holding hands now? I assume. I, 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 Once yeah. we all get together. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna move dash and then action surge dash. So okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna double dash as well <laughs> and get over there. That was a good game. game. So that's <laughs> that's forty uh, sixty feet. I knew you were gonna say it. No, I, I have it. no. I'm, I'm running. So that's thirty feet. So that's ninety. Oh, I see. So you're just running. running, running. So dash. So I'm I'm move dash dash. So you can get right up there as well. Yep. Um, and we all grab each other's hands. And you just have to wait for Gavin's turn yeah. to come around. Mm -hmm. And it does before these guys get another chance to act. Uh, so he uh, looks around the circle and says, everyone ready? We got, got the man, man, right? Go! Yeah, okay, and he casts Plane Shift. Um, <laughs> the last place you guys told him you wanted to Plane Shift to was Marble Cleft Landing, correct? Yes. yes. In which case, let me switch to music. Marble and Marble also... Marble Landing. While I'm switching music and making a roll of my own, I need you guys to make a wisdom saving throw each with the bonus from being next to Thaddeus. Uh, so what's Which the bonus we get? Plus four. Plus four? Mm -hmm. Oh, plus four. Wisdom dang. saving throw. Uh, 21. Okay, 23. that's a success. Mm -hmm. Success. Oh, okay. No, that's no, an 18. So 12, oh, no, that's 24. Yeah. So wisdom. 24. So oh, there it is. One. Okay. So that's twenty. Okay. Wow! Did we all did we all yeah. roll really well? So you all succeed. Yes. Your, um, Gavin doesn't have to make the roll. Valerie does. Oh, okay. So it goes at the top. She okay. and Guy also. also get that so you have there. dexterity. Right. Okay. okay uh, then Valerie succeeds. I almost forgot about Guy. Uh, guy. <laughs> guy, even with your plus four, is the only one in the party who fails. I figured. You um. Let's take a look at this result of this roll. The opposite effect. No emotion. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like stone faced. Um, so, two things happen as you feel sort of the reverse effect of when you entered the Feywild, and you feel um, like you're being sucked back to normalcy. Like uh, when you were entering the Feywild, it was like all this rush of colors and things like that, but the colors seem to dim as they blur around you, and you find yourself 
um, standing on a hill overlooking a large, large town. Um, as you all land there, um, Guy <laughs> turns to the group of you, specifically Thaddeus, um, and says, oh, Master Hammerlock, where are we? What happened? <laughs> As he's completely forgotten the events of the Big Wild. <laughs> Uh, what are we doing here? I, the last thing I remember, I was, I was coming to find you. Uh, I was told that you were at the right. castle. That, that is what's hands to me. We're, we're safe now. We're we're out of. Were we in, were we in danger before? You don't remember the. Uh, it's also well, blurry. We were in danger in Farndale, and Mechanical now we're not. So that's all that matters. Um, and I'm like I'm like. <laughs> so I'm like I'm a mechanical even man. Even the rest oh. of you who succeeded find that. As you try and think back on your brief time in the Feywild, the memories are blurry. Um, like you can, you can see when you think about it really hard. You can, you can see the events that transpired and remember what happened there, but details are fuzzy. Like you can't remember the specific colors of the campfire flowers um, or anything like that. Um, but Guy seems to have forgotten everything entirely, and you're overlooking a city now, which looks to be perhaps the largest city you've seen, except other than um, Farandell itself, the capital. Um, and it's situated, like the, the hill that you're on descends down a little bit um, to the city, and then you can see from your vantage point on the hill that the city itself is situated on these high cliffs, maybe 100, 200 feet, um, made of this white marble rock. And... Uh, the, the city is built uh, in almost like a circular shape around this cleft, this triangular cleft into the rock uh, that just seems to go straight down with the cliff. Um, and even at a distance, you can see that most of the buildings are uh, similar to, I suppose, the construction of Ravenmoor in that they're, there's a lot of stone and less metal than you saw in uh Farindale, but there is one building that sticks out as it is a large tower that rises above the rest, um, and it seems to be pretty close to the center of town, and it has on all four sides, though you can only from your vantage point see two sides, um, this large logo. Let me describe it to you. Um... Like Walmart, <laughs> it's like the, it's a circular <laughs> emblem, right? And it has uh, waves at the bottom, and then there seems to be a galley that is riding on the waves, like this impressive boat. Um, and the odd thing about the boat is that its sail has been replaced with like a merchant's scales. Um, then the ship is lettered, sort of like where a ship would have a name with the letters E, F, M, C, and uh, the edge of the circle, sort of around the top, connecting with the waves on either side, uh, says it ha has a couple words um, in common. It says, business for the freighting of tomorrow. <laughs> and uh, that's pretty much what you can see at a distance in the town. Uh, Gavin looks around at the rest of you and says, all right, well, everyone's here safe, right? Okay. I think so. Um, there's one last thing I should tell you about the Feywild, which is that sometimes time is a little variable. Um, it's not necessarily going to be the case that we've arrived back on the same time frame that we left on. So, so sometimes time will rewind backwards a few days, uh, the time just functions in, on, in a very different way. So, like, it could be a day. Okay, some... you're rambling now. Okay, you get my. You get <laughs> we my get thoughts. it. <laughs> so, just be aware of that. How? What's the worst case scenario here? Days become years. We spent. How many two... days were we in the Feywild? Two days. Two days. Two days. Day just and about. Half. So, worst case scenario, we're two or so years in the future of when we left? How do we even 
Was it always future? No, not he necessarily. Said it oh, okay. So it's either yeah. Well, um, that's weird. I don't, I don't know how um, we would check that. The guy is like, what? What do you mean? The Feywild? The future? <laughs> Years? I am really regretting getting rid of my sleep spell. <laughs> what are you talking about? Master Hammerlock, clarify, please. We are relatively safe now. <laughs> <laughs> However, our calendars may not be. <laughs> Um, Gavin looks at Thaddeus and says, well, this is your destination, right? Yes. You wanted to go to Marble Cleft? Yes, we need to charter a boat. I think that I should probably head to the Hammerlock Baronry, which is where I sent our family. Good. That makes sense. On I that figure I'll take this guy. Probably need for the best. You need someone to look after him, and he won't be safe on the road. The other option is he goes uh, into the city with you and then finds his own way home. Um, and as you as you look at the city, there's also another feature you can see, which is that um, a metallic road, which you've seen before, like the, the railway tracks, is leading out of the city and uh, in a general southwestern direction. Um, so it's possible he could catch a train from there? Yeah, but we wouldn't want him to go back. Like, we don't want to send him back to Ferrandel because he's going to die. <laughs> unless, unless, unless we're yeah. two years in the past, and then he'd be fine. <laughs> yeah, for the next two years, might run into it's himself. more like it's more like like five plus days in the past. He's fine, I think, right? for <laughs> yeah. some amount of time. Oh man. Well. Wait. Okay, I'm going to take the silver right dagger itself. out and look at oh, this. That's, that's a good, good idea. Yeah, good call. That's a really good idea, <laughs> considering we have no idea what happened to yeah. him. He was um, gone. As you look into the silver dagger, you see reflected a dark, but not so dark you can't see, kind of dim light. Um, okay, so he's on this planet. Cave. Cave. Uh, it seems to be at a high altitude because it's it's set up on a rock, and you can see sort of the mouth of the cave as well as part of the cave itself. Mm -hmm. um, and there seems to be snow coming from outside the cave and like blowing in a little bit and then also gathering around the edge of the mouth. Okay. Um, and you can see in human form, and uh, it seems to be, well, it's the middle of the day, he'd be awake. Um, you can see uh, in human form, sort of sitting in the cave and um, enjoying maybe a small meal. Um, Mandis is yes. sitting on a, <laughs> he's sitting on like a rock in front of a fire. All right. And... Yeah, it takes a few minutes before he uh, ke you catch his attention. I felt, I felt like I was doing this while they were like talking, and I'm yeah. like... Well, it definitely waiting. takes a few minutes, but you okay. do catch his attention, and he, he comes over to the dagger and holds it up, and he's like he, like elated to see you. Yes. I like, look over, I'll like, pull myself over Hunter's arm. And I'll, I'll make like, a, hunt, like, a smiley face for my mouth to show him I am happy too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> he uh, pulls out a piece of parchment and begins to scrawl on it. And, and I'm doing the same thing. Holds it up to the dagger. <laughs> And says, "Where have you been?" The Feywild. What day and year is it? <laughs> <laughs> he scrolls back. It's been two weeks. I haven't heard anything from you. Okay. All um, right. So we're alive. <laughs> and I'll like pan. I'll do like a panorama for him to show. Up right here. Um, two, two weeks. Two weeks. Okay. And then be like, "So glad to see you safe. We didn't know where you were. We looked for you briefly." Um, and he writes back. Yes, the uh, that giant construct of Orin's got the better of me. It it seemed uh, resistant to any of my claw and uh, tail attacks. Um, I just couldn't do enough damage to hold it down, and uh, it was so powerful. I, I I blacked out for a bit, and by the time I came to, you were gone. Yeah, it, it's okay. I finished it off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're in Marble I Cleft know. Landing. You did you that. We're that, that was okay. a really we're in Marble good Cliff thing. Landing. Did, it's did, all misspelled because I like it. Have have <laughs> I mean, it's pretty easy. It's just Marble Cliff. That's true, landing. actually. I, I forgot about. I don't that. know what a cleft that's is. Um, left the boyfriend one. Probably feels like M A R B U L. Yeah. So I'll say we are in 
what, Harbor or something? Marble Cleft Land. Marble Cleft Land. That's what I literally just said. Right Sorry, I was I know. talking about. That's why I took it over. Uh, you, How thank awesome you. we were. Yeah, yeah. We we're reminiscing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. Where we, are you? Yeah. I'm in uh, a cave, which I made, I guess, somewhat of a lair, I suppose you could say. Uh, <clears throat> he really is a dragon. Where's your horde? Yeah. <laughs> Um, this is this is where I I come to when I need to retreat from Ravenmore for a few days or something like that. Oh, okay. Um, it's in a mountain just north of Ravenmore or north of Northwood. Um, you guys saw a mountain actually uh, in the middle of the plains north of Northwood. Oh, um, that one. And there was like snow at the top of it, uh, and that is where he is. Right. Do you know what happened to Farindale? Um, he writes, yes, but it's not good. Um, I heard that uh, you did what you set out to do and defeated Orin, so that's excellent news, but his warforge overran the city, and uh, it's under their control now. Who's leading them now? Yes, yeah, good I don't know that much. I uh, haven't gone back. I've just asked villagers in the surrounding area before I left and came back this direction. Uh, and then he says, he looks troubled for a second, and he says, um, I flew over Ravenmore briefly. There seems to be problems there, too. And I can't contact Tal. Is the orphanage okay? The orphanage looked intact from my flyby. This time. What kind of problem? The city was quiet, and there weren't people about. It just seemed dangerous, so I flew here and tried to contact Tal, and I couldn't, and that solidified my concern. I think it's your vampire friend. It's possible. Um, I intend to go investigate in the next few days. It took me some time to recuperate, and now that I finally feel recovered, I think I'm about ready. We got info on how to get to the Elderhaven Reaches. He, like, raises an eyebrow. Like he's waiting for you to go on. Uh, who has the map of the Turtle Island? I give it to you? I thought you did. I thought you, yeah. I thought I gave it to somebody. Somebody, somebody had the book. Yeah, so that's in the book. I thought Hermione had the book. I mean, I had it, but I thought I, like, shoved it at someone because I was like, I don't want anything to do we with this. You were angry about it, but I don't yeah. know. Oh, yeah, you were really emotional. Because okay. yeah. I have it crossed yeah. off. Yeah, the okay. Hidden Wonders of the Coral Sea. Okay, yeah, you're right. I remember the emotional thing. You're like, nah. Because I was super <laughs> emotional in the Feywild. Yeah. So I was like, <laughs> no! That's right. That effect has now faded from all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll write that. Yeah. Yeah, you have it. So I'll like. I totally forgot. I'll go in his bag and emotional. pull it out. <laughs> Wait a second. Because <laughs> you didn't know I put it in there. <laughs> I was being emotional and show it to Mandis. Like show him the map. This one right here. Yeah, and he like nods. Like, and all right, like there's something here that can help us get through the fog. We're gonna, we were planning to go investigate. Hmm. But if you need us, we can go to Ravenmore first. Let me investigate first and see what I can find. Okay. I don't see any point in you coming all the way back here just to find out that everything's fine. There's a train, though, okay, supposedly, that maybe goes through Farindal? The train was connected to Ravenmore before I left, and they were running the first test runs. <laughs> I, I don't know what to call it, a, a train test. Good enough. Yeah. <laughs> test carriages? No, it runs is fine. Yeah. Test, yeah, trial run. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, let us know what you find. Right back. I will. Uh, just pray to whatever gods you will that I don't find something horrible when I go back into Ravenmore. Don't get yourself killed. <laughs> At least not without us he there. He chuckles and says, to... I don't intend to. <laughs> At least not without us there to, you know, pick up your slack. Much. He nods and then sort of um, 
says, he writes back one last thing, which is, I'm sorry that I couldn't be of more help in the fight, but you four truly are amazing. You are more helpful. And I'm glad to be considered your friend. And that's what he writes. Aww. I get the dagger back to Hunter and I go, (laughs) (laughs) go in the corner. I'll be like, oh, Hugh. Oh, Hugh. Okay. Mr. Jackman. I have a moment. (laughs) Mara's like, got the hot squirm. Well, they went on a self mission together, so. Yeah, they did. Not surprised. He saved your life dangling from a bridge. Yep. That was so cool. Love that. that Oh, man. Thaddeus wasn't paying attention to any of this because he was going to have a parting word with his brother. Except when I like pulled the book out. I don't don't know if you noticed that. I could roll a sleight of hand for it. So his perception's bad. I (laughs) call with Mandis, but then I wanted to ask, like, are you gonna, like, are you gonna be contacting us tonight or tomorrow? We could go back to like the every morning. He writes back. I'll just check. Yes, uh, just check the dagger when you have time, and I will send information when I know more. So you're talking to Gavin? Yeah. Like, um, Did anybody Gavin... check on Toothless Valerie? <laughs> yeah, toothless Valerie, Valerie? Valerie is missing a tooth. <laughs> um, and there's blood streaming from her throat. Gavin actually gave her the healing potion, though, so she looks a lot better uh, than she did. But she's still down quite a few hit points. Uh, those Corrid guys are no joke when they're hitting you with their great club. She took 21 points of damage. Holy in one crap. Point. So. Um... But yeah, uh, Valerie and Gavin almost like pulled off a little ways away from you as all of this was happening, um, and seemed to be having a muffled conversation to themselves. Yeah, that is no enjoyment. Okay. As soon as you come up, uh, they stop their conversation and uh, sort of turn towards you, just suspiciously. It's like, it seemed like I passed the guard here, but I wanted to warn the people before you left. He lets out an audible sigh. <laughs> <sighs> You had enough words in the past two days. We've talked more in the past few days than we have in the past ten years. I know. But whatever you have to say, get on with it. I told you that last time we spoke, I wanted we would resume this later. And I just wanted to make sure that my warning was sunk in. And I point over at Harmony, who's like like writing much stuff. Writing the yeah, we're like, in the like my my tail's like twitching like a yeah. like an eager cat. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever met a typo before? No. No, not until <laughs> recently. <laughs> <laughs> Neither had I, but we learned about them in advance a little bit. And what we learned there was that they're kind of the result of a part in some of the long, 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 long time ago. The result of that bargain you can still see to this day. That bargain for power tainted their bloodline forever. Even people who, like Harmony, aren't evil, have like have done nothing to deserve this mark upon them, still carry it. And that's the kind of power that I'm worried that we did have right now. Um he, his eyes are narrow while you're saying all of this, and he like glances back and forth between mm-hmm. Harmony and you, and he's, then he's, after a moment, uh, says, But you, a very astute judge of character, travel with this marked one anyways, which means you must to some degree hold her in a certain amount of regard. Sure. And she, she'd prove herself a wild friend. But... She shouldn't have magic, and neither should you. Um, that is reserved for the gods alone. He says, I see. Um, and I'm, I'm warning you that not because I'm jealous, but because I'm worried. Like, I, I want you to consider what the consequences of this deal may do for generations to come, not just for the Hammerlock clan, but for all of Freyden if you end up as king. Remember... Um, the typhoons. As he's taking all of this in, Remember the typhoons. make a persuasion check. Okay. Well, we all know that that's his uh, tag for tomorrow. <laughs> Daddy has asked you to please remove the typhoons. Fifteen. Fifteen. Not great. Can I um, tides of chaos him? No, it's only been luck. Tides of chaos is for myself. I could have been lucky. 
You're kind of absorbed in the conversation. That's yeah. true. Um, That's true. If you think Harmony's paying enough attention to have her ripples of luck go out. I feel like that's a conversation that's kind of about me. <laughs> Your little tickling ears are perking up. Alright, go ahead. Good luck. <laughs> okay. Is it before? Yep. I think it goes for four hands. Four! four! So okay. I see 19 total? Yeah. Um, like I said, his eyes were narrowed and in sort of a uh, spiteful way, like he doesn't want to be lectured by you. Mm -hmm. um, but towards the end of it, there's um, when you say remember the, specifically when you say um, remember what this could do to the Hammerlock, Hammerlock family for generations to come, um, you see his eyes soften a little bit, and he says, don't worry Thaddeus, I'm careful. Then, I hope that you're careful as you go home. Watch over him safely. Take your look out for our family. I will, of course. And, uh, you don't die either. And then he turns away, like, he can't, like, <laughs> look at your reaction to that. <laughs> um, just for when you were walking up, roll a perception check as well, sort of retroactively. Okay. Well, that's a one. Okay. So it becomes a three. All right. I see perception check. Then yep. Butterfly. Yep, yep. Nothing else changes. Okay. That is what happened. What, what was that tweet today that you sent me? Is that a pigeon? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was no, there was a tweet about, like, someone, some anime where, like, the guy was, like, looking at a butterfly and said, Is that a pigeon? And the caption was, When you roll a one on that perception check. Oh! <laughs> that's great. That's a good question. Oh, my God. Awesome. So. Um, Gavin. <laughs> does not really go to make any farewells to the rest of you. Um, we probably so didn't even notice. He goes and stands some distance away, kind of like pushing Guy. And then uh, Valerie is maybe a couple steps behind. She spares a glance over at Mara and just gives like a little wink and then goes to join her son and they begin to walk off uh, in a self. I stick my tongue out direction. at their backs as they walk away. <laughs> she like winks with her non-bruised side. <laughs> 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 so yeah. One time all puppy and stuff. <laughs> so, what do you learn from Manus? <laughs> no, I'm, uh, kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, apparently there's some weird shit going down in Ravenmore. He he's going to investigate. He, yeah, he's going to get back to us. But I am... Oh yeah, Warforged apparently took over Arendelle, which isn't really it. It's not really news, but it but, sounds like they're controlling it now, which leads uh, me to believe someone are, took Warren's place. We were gone for two weeks. We were gone Ugh. for two weeks. Yeah, that, that we probably should have led with that. Yeah, I was trying out, I was under like, uh, <laughs> more importantly... I was just like, Ravenmore! <laughs> not Ravenmore! She's like, more. rambling, like she does. <laughs> Anyway, I also we also we told him about our plans to uh, go to this island, mm -hmm. yeah. and he said he'd contact us if he needs help. All right. Well, I suppose Mara should lead the way then. This is where you're from, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You would know the best route, the best boats to charter. I don't. I've never heard Wait, of this. This is your. This is where you're from. Mm -hmm. you, like, Sorry, did here? I know that? Uh, I, feel like, I don't think we I don't did. Feel no, like no, we, we just asked, and then she's like, "Yeah, that's a good place." Good place. Mm. You know she's a sailor. I know that there's a reason. Did that conversation happen? I can't remember. There's a reason I asked. Right. So we're like, have you been there before? So we asked yeah. about Harbor Towns, and then yeah. you're like, oh, what do you think, yeah, Mara? Said, you seem yeah, like you're, you know, low on your feet. Oh, and right, then she's yeah, like, right. that's a good oh, place. Okay. You're right. Yeah. So yeah. we don't know that. So, so I won't. I wouldn't say you're from here, but like this, this was your recommendation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's, oh, there we go. Either way. Okay, mm -hmm. let's go see which ship has the most rats. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, Mara, some they're not carrying any diseases. main yeah. locations you would know about in the city from the last time you were here when you were seven years old, right after your, or uh, leading up to your parents' death and uh, the few weeks after that while you were in the orphanage. Um, you know, of course, that there's an orphanage here. Um, 
called White Orchid Orphan Home, home which is where you lived for a couple of weeks before your grandfather came to pick you up. Um, your family's old house was here, but you're not necessarily sure what happened to it after you left. Uh, there is also the docks, which are in between the cleft and the marble cliffs. Um, and you're not necessarily familiar with the big tower in the middle of the town, but you would probably know the symbol of it um, because you would have seen it growing up, um, though this tower hadn't been built yet. It is uh, the symbol of the East Freighton Mercantile Corporation, um, which is a basically a trading corporation that deals with a lot of overseas trade. Um, like the Hudson Bay. Yeah. Uh, and that's about the places that you would know within the city, I think. Okay. So I guess if they want me to find a boat, I better go around, talk to the crews on it, and see which ones are available for hire. You're going to head to the dock? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you head towards the city, and when you get within maybe about 100, 200 feet of the gate, um, you see something that is shocking to all of you. Um, <laughs> the gates are open, and Orin. people are going in and out. Orin. <laughs> oh, but shit. stationed on either side of the gate, wearing uniforms that seem like oddly fit, like a little, like way too tight, um, with the same East Freighton Mercantile Corporation logo on them, um, are a pair of Warforged. Uh, oh. Okay, that's interesting. Oh, fuck. So looking inside, can we? Is the gate closed? No, nope, it's open, and so people seem to be going in and out. People, the forged, yes, <laughs> okay. people. Okay. <laughs> Do you wanna see me? Disguise. Well, if they're out in the open, you're fine. Maybe, and and if we like stand there for or, like. A short time, do we see Warforged walking around too? Like with um, the people? Yeah, occasionally within the gates, you'll see a Warforged moving a little. Like, um, as you watch the gates a little bit more, you'll see that uh, occasionally a Warforged will come and um, speak briefly with one of the Warforged that's at the gate and, and then go away. It's You can't tell from as far away okay. as you are, but um, they exchange words and then. The other one will go away. They all seem to be wearing the same uh, tightly stretched East Mercantile, East Freight and Mercantile Corporation. Uniforms. Do they look just like me? Yep. Okay. So I was gonna say you can just give me a uniform. I can yeah. Well, in. I'm thinking, what if they know us? We just killed their leader. Well, like I said, you can give me a uniform, and I can just, or we can all look like them. That's what I'm saying. That. I could cast seeming, and we could all have disguises. I will not look like a Warforged. I'm not saying to make us look like Warforged. I mean to make us look not like us. I won't look like anything but myself. You are the most stubborn motherfucker I've ever had. <laughs> what about that one time I mean, you disguised as a romance novel? I made you look like a romance novel, dude. Oh, that's true. Gaston. No, I was Gaston, actually. With the long flowing <laughs> locks. It's true. It was different. <laughs> so we could just try and walk up there and see, what, see what's going on. Worst case, will we go away. Do you think or you can give me. You can. Or... I mean, he basically when when we when we killed when we killed him, he basically like told us the Warforged were gonna come after us. So what's wouldn't they all are, know our faces? Are they watch like are are these Warforged guards like watching the gates? Are they like looking down? They're on the ground on either side of the gate. Okay. And they do seem to be sort of casually looking at everyone that goes in and out. Mm -hmm. Um, but you haven't seen them stop anyone. I'm going to go up to one of them and say, excuse me. He turns towards you. Yes? What's your name? I am Prototype 402. How long have you been at this? That is none of your business. <laughs> Move along. And it just sort of like nods its head into the city. Uh, I'll, I'll look back at, at the rest of you to see. I'm going to cast this guy self on myself. Okay. And fuck it, if you guys don't Does want to. Does the crown still work? 
I think it was a one charge thing. Oh, okay. I I have to read. She didn't get the permanent enchantment. So I'm I'm a I bit worried. I would be a, I'd be a little worried for myself because I'm gonna stick out like a sore thumb without. Because none of the other warp they all have uniforms. You said. So I mean, steal one for you. Either that or we disguise a uniform and then I'll just look like them, or I'll or I'll just be a human. Mara, if you're looking for a place to potentially steal a uniform, the guardhouse is behind them might be a place where you could find one. What do you want to do? You want me to try to get one for you? That would be easier than, you know, casting a visible spell. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> it has a duration. It has yeah, an eight hour, it's an eight hour duration. Sure, but, but is it concentration? Maybe I should no. scry in there to see if there's one in there before I go out of trouble. Well, that seems... No, it, I think there should be one there. Okay. Okay, so you, you're going for it? Yeah, why yeah, not? You sort of get in the gates and then <laughs> like when no one's looking, double back a little bit and stand by the entrance to the guardhouse door waiting for a good moment and roll a stealth check. Are you proficient in stealth? Yeah. I'm sneaky. Are you proficient? Oh, in stealth. No. No. Wait, really? No, she picks oh, basically right. all the other right. things. Uh, eight. So eight. that's not. Um, eight plus, as you... plus four, then, right? No, it's four plus four. It was four yeah. plus four. Yeah. As you put your hand on the doorknob and uh, go to open it up, um, the warforce that Thaddeus was speaking to sort of uh, looks around the corner and sees you there and says, Excuse me, you're not authorized to access that area. Retreat within the city, immediately. What's that over there? <laughs> he just continues to stare at you. I repeat, you're not authorized to access that area. I heard you the, the first time. Calm down. <laughs> and his hand is like on the hilt of a sword. Okay. Civilian, that was not a request. <laughs> I'm trying to think if I want to take out my, uh, one of my daggers and get, just go up the back of it and take the one off of him. broad daylight no. in public. <laughs> no. Don't no, you you're not. You're not sneaky. No, I know. And you're this good is at supposed to be my stealing things. Well, you did a lot of things. Pick it, though. Slide of hand, right? You're not yeah, good at sneaking thing. around. You're good at pickpocketing. That's mm -hmm. true. Okay. Um, you have that. What's your background? Bad reputation. What does that mean? Yeah, you? it means that um, my bad reputation lets me get away with stuff. Yeah, stealing stuff with with like. Normal people, I think. Normal yeah. people. I, I'm going to yeah. say it wouldn't work on the Warforge. Yeah. Um, but, like, if this were a regular city guard, you, you might have been able to talk your way out of it yeah, or something like that. Yeah, because of panache or something yeah. like that. But. <laughs> you could still use panache on the Warforge if you want to try, if you have a something you want to talk your way into it. Okay. I'm going to try to convince him that I saw something go in there and I have to get it out. Okay. Uh, so, how does panache work then? He needs to... It's... Um, my charm becomes sharp. I can make a persuasion check contested by a creature's wisdom in chat. Uh, we must share a language. We do share a language, so mm -hmm. this can work. Uh, go ahead and make your persuasion check, and I will make a insight check. It's a 10. I have a 16. Okay, uh, so as you have your um, you, you sort of uh, have your handle, hand on the handle, um, and you ex begin exuding that you charming like, persona. You blink your eyelashes <laughs> um, <laughs> like it would work on a warforged. You put your warforged makeup on and like blush, and then you're like... Um, probably, I think, the way that Mara would have to roll with, with this in this situation is... Um, <laughs> they almost, almost look like more innocent, but not necessarily flirty. Mm -hmm. It's like I think that's what Mara would. I'm going to the little programmer's room or something. <laughs> <laughs> so then, what do you say? You say uh, saw something going on. Yeah, there? yeah. I think I saw a baby crawl in there, and it's not safe. You might have weapons in there. I've got to go get it out. Uh, he he puts the his hand off of the hilt of the sword and says, "Was it your child?" Uh, Are we close enough to hear this happening? That is I know you're not, but like... Yeah, what, if you want to be. Can I cast Minor Illusion and have the sound of a baby from inside the room? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> a baby crying. 
Uh, and then he, he looks at you and says, is it your child? Um, it's a friend of mine's. Okay. Um, <laughs> he then sort of pushes past you and opens the door and then strides into the room and begins to look around. You can see uh, there's a, a wardrobe that is hanging open to the right side of the door, which has one uh, uniform for the East Trade and Mercantile Corporation so hanging in, in it. Um, and if you want to try and snatch that while he's got his back turned to you looking through the room, mm -hmm. go ahead and make a sleight of hand check. Oh, that's what you're good at. This yeah, is this is what you're good at. <laughs> it's okay, you get a so 10. So it's going to be it's a 13. 13? No, 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 it's, no, 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 no. it's, it's a 10. 10. Plus, Plus 12. Oh, 22. <laughs> so 22. Yeah. yeah. Anytime um, you go right. under a 10, it's a 10. It's a 10. I yeah. was going to add 10 to it. Okay. No. 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 Okay. Got Whoop. it. Okay. Yep. Just shove it under my dress um, real quick. And then he just turns back to you like, right after you get it away and says, there's no child in here. I'll cast again. It coming from outside of the thing this time. Like, <laughs> Move aside. I must retrieve this child. <laughs> he like, pushes past him. <laughs> <laughs> like, goes around the other corner looking for the baby. Okay. There is no child here. Where is this child? I'll cast it from inside again. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I'm not paid enough for this. Oh, this okay, is the here. kind of shit I love. Okay. Oh, Daddy hasn't let me do this in so long. All right, guys, come on. While he's, while he's looking for that invisible baby, let's go. I got one. Okay, so I'll find so a your discreet place to put it on real quick so and then I'll just... I'll cast Disguise Self on myself. As you walk in, both of the Warforged sort of nod at you. I'll nod back in their same fashion, and I'll just walk in with them. Okay. So everyone is in the city now. And I make myself look So I'm going to... I'm going to... Uh, and you fit in very well, because as you begin to walk down the streets, you see that most of the citizens of this town that you pass seem to be in this rich, um, colorful, flowing garb. Um... They're carrying like purses on their hips, like they're not afraid of thieves and things like that. Oh, um, no wonder you like it here. <laughs> so I'm gonna try and do my best to pay as much attention to like the demeanor and like what's going on with like the workforce interactions and see like what their role is in the town, so I can sort of maybe act the part a little bit. You don't see too many more warforged past the gate uh, until you sort of come passing through the middle area of town when you get next to the East Freight and Mercantile Corporation tower that is up in the middle. Okay. Um, and then you see that there are Warforged standing at the doors there. And um, like as you look up, you can see into some of the windows and you can see Warforged standing at attention throughout the tower. Um, and there's occasionally one or two that will be patrolling the like plaza around the tower. Okay. Um, so that's the only place where you start to so, see So yeah, anytime they have interactions with themselves or with people, I want to like listen in and see how they talk and like yeah whenever they are speaking and interacting with people they're like using a like direct translation version of binary i guess <laughs> like it's very rigid oh okay um, between themselves yeah between themselves and okay. even when they're interacting with other people okay um mm -hmm. it's just very like plain and monotone okay that's fine but then I understand it, right? So I, I can still hear what yeah, they're saying. Yeah, they're, they're speaking common, but it's like they're right, trying right. to put binary into common. Got it. Sense. Yeah. Okay. I see. And then also within themselves, too, if they're talking, if they have side conversations. A couple of them that you overhear uh, do speak in like binary as well. Okay. Um, most of the things that you overhear them saying, since you're specifically paying attention to that, um, is just like they're reporting to each other about different duties. Like they aren't, they don't have any personal conversation. It's just like, did anything occur on your watch here? No. Did you see any trouble on your patrol here? Yes, there was a kid that was giving me trouble. You know, stuff like that. But there was a baby. And then what was the? <laughs> there was, was the this baby. I couldn't find it. It's yeah. Gone. What was what was his number? Uh, four o two. Okay, think? sure. Four o something. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, Do they refer to themselves as numbers? Yeah, they seem to. Yeah. Cool. Uh, the docks, then, as you get closer to the edge of the marble cleft itself, um, you can see that the docks are down like 200 feet below in this 
uh, alcove that is created by this cleft in the marble cliffs that make up this portion of the coast. Um, and you can see several ships lined up there. It's a, it's a really large cove. Um, so there's a lot of like the metallic uh, freight ships, the giant ones that you saw going across the Heart Lake um, that you know don't generally service passengers. And then there's several smaller, um, medium to large sized uh, trading vessels, which are made out of wood and some out of wood and metal combinations. Um, as far as how people are getting up and down, you can see that there are two metal elevators that seem to be rigged or like, um, not necessarily elevators, but like they're cranked waiters um, that are carved into the sides of the cliff and they're large, like they uh, are supposed to accommodate large uh, boxes or cargo and things like that. And you, as you watch, you see that they will bring up shipments of cargo and then load those onto wagons and then send them throughout the city. Um, and then Warforge seem to be manning the cranks for those that go up and down. Uh, and then you can see that there's also, and this would be what Mara remembers, um, the merchants used to have to cart things up a steep winding cliff path, um, or path on the edge of the cliffs, uh, which now as you look down the cliffs seems to be largely abandoned. Um, but as you look down into the ships. Let me see if there are any that stand out specifically. I believe that there are. Um, you see a medium-sized wooden trading vessel uh, that has a sail and it looks like it has several oars. Um, and on its sail it seems to have a picture of um, a half uh, fish, half human uh, female. Um, who seems to be like uh, puckering her lips for a kiss, but there's just not like she's kissing anything specific. It's just like she's sitting on a rock with her tail draping off, puckering her lips as if she's going to kiss something. Um, then there is one uh, really ragtag ship that is just like cobbled together from what looks like uh, various pieces of rusted metal and uh, other more new pieces of iron, and then there's wood that seems to be rotten in some places, but brand new in others. Would you call this ship a junk? It is, yes, a junk. <laughs> um, and you can see that it, on its flag, has it. um, a black goblin face. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's got like a black goblin face on its sail. That's what it would have. Um, and then there is a third one that's a larger than the other two wooden vessel um, that has a uh, it has a like a like a specter like the undead specter on it. And this like black wispy creature, um, but it seems to be drinking from a tankard. And then the last ship that is in the bay that looks like it would probably service uh, passengers and not just freight is the most impressive of them all. And it is a beautiful ship crafted and painted to resemble a massive bronze dragon in flight. So it has these sort of like uh, impractical wing looking things coming off of it. Um, and its mast goes up and it has the like picture of a dragon's head on it and the bow comes to a point uh, in a carving that looks like a dragon and that is about to like chomp. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, those are the those are the main ships that you can see down in the harbor. Okay, so instead of going uh, on the elevator things to the one forge nearby, I'll use the old path to kind of wind my way down there and make my inspections. Okay, so you are all going to wind your yeah. way down the cliff? I have we? Yeah, we'll two follow. questions. Uh -huh. This town is, you said it's bigger than anything we'd seen. Bigger than, than Ravenmoor, smaller than Freydon, essentially. Okay. Or Ferrandel. Yep. 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 Smaller than Freydon. Bigger than Ravenmoor? Much smaller than, yes, bigger <laughs> than Ravenmoor. Ravenmoor was... It was decent size. Decent size, yeah. Um, okay. As we're kind of wandering, and I'm letting them kind of I don't know anything about boats, but I'd like to kind of 
um, ask people if they know if there's a <clears throat> magic shop here. Um, As we're walking, I'll just stop one of the people. Yeah, you, you stop a woman who looks almost like very similar to your disguise. Uh, and that she's just like rich and gaudy. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and she says, Darling, whatever would you have need of magic for? We have no need with Thimblefoot's inventions pouring in by the day. Oh, but they have just the most peculiar oddities there, and I just really, really enjoy looking at the little <laughs> knickknacks, you know? <laughs> well, a, a love of oddities is one thing I can certainly understand, uh, but I can't say that I have any fascination for the arcane myself. I wouldn't even know where to look. Oh. <laughs> I, I do understand very, very much. Thank you Shut ever up. so much for your time. Of course, darling, of course. Okay, while they're talking, I'm picking her first. <laughs> okay. Wait for that. I was like counting down in seconds. Until that started <laughs> oh, I got But you're yeah. proficient in that, so that's not no, a No, but when yeah. you actually got no, 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 no. it's a 22. It's a 22. Yeah. How many I times know. did you have I to know, do I know, I know, but I thought it went for... Because no. you say no. natural 20? Natural ones. Yeah, I think that's only in combat yeah. that okay. that matters. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's an auto fail. Uh, so it's a 22. Yep, you go up and just real quick with one of your daggers, cut both the strings, the pouch falls <laughs> gently into your hand. Uh, you take it off into a back alley and open it up and find yourself the new owner of 40 gold pieces. Oh boy. We might need so, it for the trip. You're looking at you us. have a... Uh, <laughs> I'm like following list. you. I was I following know. her. I'm looking right at her doing this. <laughs> All right. I'd like to ask, ask a lot of different types of people, though. Okay. Um, yeah, after asking several people, um, and like most of them seem willing to talk to you. None of them like spur you away or Of anything course, like I look that. like a beautiful yeah. rich woman. Um, no one you talk to seems to know about any magic shops in the area. It kind of seems seems like no one here is even interested in that sort of thing. I hate this town. <laughs> one of them does tell you, darling, if you're interested in <laughs> the rumors of the bygone age of magic, you might want to speak with some of the older sailors that come through town. They can be found in... Uh, well, some of the taverns. There's there's a couple that they frequent. Um, they tend to have stories about all kinds of ancient places full of horrible, horrible magic. Oh dear, that sounds ever so dangerous. Frightful and indeed. thrilling. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my cup of tea. And where would we find these sailors? What's the name of this tavern? Well, I don't frequent them myself, but you sometimes see the old fo the, the old uh, sea types going into. Uh, that, that rundown place, um, I can find my, oh, there's, there's two places. Those two, uh, rundown places, uh, the old sea dog or, you know, the drunken clan, that's where the really old ones hang out. Uh, you wouldn't catch me there, no, I'm, I'm more about the Marble Heights Casino myself. A casino? A casino? <laughs> oh, if you know anything about this town, you know that it's grown, grown prosperous because of... Uh, the East Freighton Mercantile Corporation. Uh, it's their casino. They set it up, well, maybe a few years back. How silly of me to have forgotten. Yeah. It can happen. I'm just so... There are many distractions. I've only just see. arrived, and there's just so much to see and do. I'm, I feel I'm a bit overwhelmed. We are tourists. <laughs> <laughs> he, like, looks at Thaddeus and, like, instantly looks back at you since don't, you're matching Don't mind card. my bodyguard. He's... Very grumpy all the time. Yes, I can tell. You don't want to bring him to the casino. It'll bring down the entire vibe. <laughs> I, you know, I, I think you're quite right. Um, and then, uh, let me she says one more thing about that. Hold on a second. What would um, that do if I offered you some of the gold? He says, the Night Claws won't thank you for bringing down their atmosphere. The Night Claws. Thank you ever so much for the warning. Well, of course, of course. <laughs> have, a, have a good day. Man, he struts off. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to watch him very carefully and be like, next time I have to disguise that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking it. I don't say it out loud. I'm just thinking it. <laughs> but Hunter knows. Um, <laughs> you can see the glint in Yeah, I always know. Like... <laughs> Tamara, as you're looking down the cliff, um, 
the pathway you're going to have to take, this narrow winding path. Go ahead and make a perception check. You should do a different dice. <laughs> well, it was, it was really you good You haven't rolled a four in the past, like, <laughs> so I don't even know seven. how many times. Seven. It was doing pretty well earlier. Um, I think it's done. I get tired. Yeah, from, from up here you can see a couple birds that seem to be roosting on the cliffs, but it doesn't look like anyone really uses them anymore. Most people bringing cargo up seem to use the elevators. For one reason or another. So is it, like, just rocks and, like, cliffside, or is it, like... It's like a winding path. Like, the path will go down maybe, like, 100 feet, like and then it, sw and it switches back, yeah, and it'll go down, like, yeah. 50 feet, and then goes down, like, 25 okay. feet. Do, well, do I guess we sort of... Well, I guess we sort of... We sort of... Um, some people, yeah. They, like, sailors and things will come up with their cargo, it looks like. But since we've got him and he looks like he belongs in the city, maybe it'd be okay to use it to go down. Mm. What, do you, what do you think? Do you want to walk? Go down where? To the docks to hire a ship. Isn't that what we're here for? I don't that is what we're here for. I... Yeah? Sure. Are we in such a hurry to leave? I mean, I'm kind of tired after our... Well... We just have to make arrangements. It's not like we have to. We don't want right them. We don't. If one, if one of these ships talks to a fancy, we want to make sure it doesn't meet with each other. I see. Yeah. Plus, we can rest on the ship. That's true. I just, I feel like we should have a look around here we before we leave. You want to go to the casino? <laughs> <laughs> I no, put that in there because I was like, one of these two might want to go. <laughs> you know, that's. These two. We don't even do straight laced people right here. And... It's not what you think. I, <laughs> Nazria was the gambler. I'm, I'm just, you know, I just, something sounds a little bit fishy about this, this corporation and like the war forged everywhere. Like, should we make sure that, that the, the eyes and the hands don't have their grimy little fingers and eyelashes up in this place? <laughs> eyelashes. Do you know why I haven't killed you for a petty theft? What? It's because there are much greater threats in the world that need avenging. I don't care what this corporation is doing when the eyes of the world are on the Elder Haven Regents. And the the Elder Haven Regents. Whoever. But what if they're here? Shouldn't we stop what they're doing here while we're here? Do you have any evidence that they're here? There are Warforged at the gates. I spoke to those Warforged. They're not. They're not like Hunter. They don't understand. None of the Warforged we've met have been like Hunter. That's not true. Horror was like Hunter. Wen was like Hunter. These were not like Horror or Wen. Yeah, Kor and Wen had their sentience about them. The difference between Wen and Hunter was that Wen didn't have his free will. That's what I'm talking but about. But he was still like sentient and conscious. These these Warforged seem to be drones. drones. They don't even have yep. names. Yeah, but where else would they have gotten them if not from the eyes? I don't think the eyes made them. I think the Thimblefoot Corporation made them, and the eyes took advantage of that. So it's unreasonable. That's not to say that the eyes are not taking advantage of something here. Let's just like let's just look around and, and check it out, and if nothing so, comes of it, we can leave. Well, on another note, we did offer Mandis that we would be available for a short time. Right. That was a, our personal favor. So we do have a little bit of time. Like in you Harmony's guys can defense. go, you can go and you can pick out your boat, so, and maybe Hunter and I will just sniff around a bit and see what we can see. And you and Mara can just, you know, dance around the docks, find a nice ship, make a make arrangements, and we can meet up at the Drunken Clam later and have a drink with some sailors. Well, let's meet at the casino over dinner. I'm sure they have a nice restaurant. Oh, darling, they have so many nice <laughs> restaurants. How long have you been standing a different there? Different passerby says. <laughs> I hope to see you there. I want right. to go to the casino. Let's go. I, I want to go to the casino. I'll agree to this on one condition. Mara and I have final say over the vote we take. Yeah, whatever. I don't mm. care. I never agreed to this. Why? What? I want to say the vote, too. Why? It's just the boat. Well, well, then you, may not you care. guys can all pick out the boat also, and I'll go spin around no, by myself. No, we are not leaving you by yourself. I, the casino. I can still chaperone you. I didn't say I was going to the casino. I mean, that's one of the places that. I'm going. How about, I'm not a gambler. How about we'll talk about the boat over dinner? All right. You okay. three can have and all I'm, the I'm same like, you I'm are. Like, I don't 
Okay. My vote's for the junk one. <laughs> As we leave. No! Ew! And then I'll okay, like, I do have an opinion. Yeah, we'll like talk about it and you're like, why would you do that? Why and we're walking this away. It looks like it's gonna fall apart! Am I, am I cracking too? Only when needed, Harmony. What? <laughs> That's efficiency. Yeah. What's gonna happen, just, just so you guys know, a little peek into the future of the campaign, <laughs> is that you're going to be like set on the the really nice boat and like you're going to be all ready to go and the war force is going to be hot on your tails for something harmony's done and you're going to be making a dash across the docks for that one but then it will explode with a fireball and then you'll look at that one and you'll say the piece of junk will do just like star wars yeah oh there we go yeah. nice the piece of junk will do it's the millennium falcon of ships yeah, that's yeah. funny what well, no it's a great ship it's kind of you know special but it's great well it seems the most like it's uh, a piece so. of junk <laughs> hey, oh, red or tattered group. Oh god. All right, All right. so hey, you know what? Type good luck. Don't even have hyperdrive. So don't even. I'll turn you into a gambler. Here, I got this from the lady. Spend it at the casino. I give you. Did you say gold. this right in front of him, or yep. did you pull me aside? You saw me do it. I watched. But you're watching me. <laughs> you're giving it to me to spend at the casino. Sure, it's free right. money. It's lucky money. All right. <laughs> I know oh, these I two won't gamble. Yeah, gambling. <laughs> we tie it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Off we go then. Okay. And down then the also, are you going for the mm -hmm. elevators? Sorry. So, down what? the cliff sides, or are you going for the elevators? Two, what right? did we decide to do? Are we, um, let's who's use coming? It. Let's use it. It's just you and me, I think. Yeah, you two are doing the ship. I thought you wanted to. to no, I want to say in it, so I want to speak my opinion about that. Yeah. We're going to talk about over dinner. Okay, yeah. so we're going to check it out, yeah. we'll, and we're going to snip it down. I'm not going to make okay. a decision until we talk about it. Well, yeah. what do you want to do since he's not going to be with us? He was going to be our passage to get down since they're guarded. Are you okay with going Don't down the long down. way? No. All right, let's try it. Flash your signet ring. Basically, Dalla. yes. I look like I belong there. Yeah. <laughs> Just like it. Yeah, it's true. You also have a bad reputation, so you can get yeah. away with so shit. So I'll, I'll walk up to one of the elevator operators and says, two to go down, please. <laughs> um, yeah, and the Warforged starts Actually, he probably doesn't say please. Turns your head to it. Or, or turns his head to you and says, Authorization? I'm a noble of this country. I, that is Hammerlock. That is my authorization. Take us down. He says, Present your proof. And he fishes around for his signet ring, pulls it out. And the Warforged, like, looks at it very intently, and then looks back at you, and looks beep, at it again, beep, beep, and says, beep. You are cleared to ride this contraption, or whatever. Uh, <laughs> we'll just call it a lift. This thing yeah, we're cleared to ride the lift. Come uh, come aboard. And he sort of uh, waits for you to come aboard, and then waits for a couple other people to come aboard. Come on. Um, that look like they're dock workers, probably mm -hmm. going to unload one of the vessels. Um, and then the slow, clanky ride downward begins. Um, it probably takes a total of like five minutes to get down, because it just goes slowly down this 200-foot mm -hmm. cliff. Um, and as you are going down this elevator, oops, like 15 minutes left, um, you can sort of like look out on the cliffs themselves, and you see that in the cliffs there are several holes, which you couldn't see from above, um, and occasionally flying out from those, those holes, what you thought were birds initially, um, are almost like winged humanoid forms, but they're, they're smaller, um, and completely naked. They aren't wearing clothes. Um, and they will fly out over the sea, and then when they get like above a seagull or something, they'll like drop into a dive and like catch the seagull in their hands, and then like rip its head off with uh, their teeth, and then fly back to the cliffs and t like go back into one of the holes with it. Ew. What did you say they were? Just these like humanoid creatures. Um, if you got a monster manual, I can show Harpies? Them. Yeah, they're, they're harpies. Okay. But they're, they're like. Uh, smaller humanoids, like human bird with thing. like bird-like yeah. wings. Yeah. yeah. They're a what? Harpy. Oh, a harpy. Are, there's, there's, there's other people on the platform, right? Yeah, on, on the platform, and like these elevators are like caged in, so mm -hmm. like that you might you gathered like part of the purpose yeah. of that might be that these things can't get to you. Yeah. But if they were going up, if you were going up or down the cliffside path, you might have to deal with that. These. Oh, weapons. good thing. Yeah. Good thing. Mm -hmm. I'll I'll nudge one of the other paths. Are those a problem? Uh, the one you nudge is like a, a gruff yeah. dock yeah, work, I know. worker types, and he says, They don't really seem to bother us down on the docks, since there's so many of us and they're not terribly strong. Uh, 
they used to bother some of the merchants as they were traveling back up and down the cliffs, but they'd keep guard with them, and they weren't much of a problem back then either. Mm. Well, They've definitely increased in numbers since we stopped using those paths, so that's for sure. Good to know. Mm. And he sort of just like looks the other way, like people do in elevators. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, and eventually you come down to the, the bottom, uh, and there's a like marble platform that's in front of the exit to this lift, um, and then the docks themselves begin. And now that you're at the bottom of this cleft, you can see that it is just this massive wedge cut into uh, this cliffside, and several of those uh, like gigantic... Um, freight cargo ships fit in here, so it, it is definitely a very large harbor. Um, and you now have a closer look at the four ships that you think might carry passengers, um, and you can see their names that are scrolled across the side. Boats in the harbor, here we go. Um, the one that it looks like it's shaped like a dragon is um, not surprisingly titled the Bronze Worm, W Y R M. Uh, the one with the mermaid who looks to be puckering um, is called the Drowning Kiss. Um, the one with the black goblin's face, uh, which now that you get down to this angle, you can see that it's like got its tongue hanging out and has X's on its eyes. Um, it says uh, Maglubiet's Disgrace. <laughs> Um, and the one with the specter that seems to be drinking a tankard of ale says the shameless specter. They're all fabulous. Uh, Thaddeus, I think, is going to look at Mara and say, which one, which one draws your eye? Well, why don't we um, start with the closest one and work our way. All right. The closest one is the drowned or the drowning kiss. Which is the one that is the closest one to the I was like, Daddy's gonna wanna ride the mermaid <laughs> yeah. one. Yeah. This one's sort of like medium size. It's it's not a huge ship. Um, That's really funny. I knew it. But there's a plank that seems to go up to the deck and one of the dock workers that got off the elevator with you um, immediately goes unloading some cargo from there. Um, so if you want to snag him as he's on his way back to the elevator, you could definitely do that. Yeah, I, w I would suddenly, excuse me, I, I need, I need to speak to your captain. Uh, do, 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 let me just read about her for a second. Right. Uh, he says, <clears throat> ah, you're, you're going to want Captain Constance Holt. Um, she's not down here at the moment. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you're looking for Constance, um, she frequently, uh, can be found at the Drunken Clam when we're on land. Her and a bunch of the other old coots tend to go there and drink. Um, if you're looking for a better time, though, let me tell you, the rest of us sailors tend to gather at the uh, the old sea dog. Mm. It's a little more lively, if you know uh, what I mean. I understand perfectly. Uh, but if you're looking for the captain, yeah, that's where you can find her. How long have you sailed with this one? With the uh, Captain Constance? No, with the ship. Oh, well... As, as long as I've been with the ship, I've been with Captain Constance. Her ship, after all. Mm. Uh, yeah, many years. Almost my entire life since I was a, a young lad. You take passengers off? Sometimes. Depends where you're looking to go. Our main route takes us up to... Um, to uh, Adeus, but uh, we sometimes will head down the coast of Freyden. Mm. Alright. Thank you for your time. How many rats are on board? Oh, no man. rats are on board. <laughs> His eyes shift a little. You may be honest with us. There's a few rats on board. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, there's rats on board every one of these ships. Even the bronze worm, whatever they would have you believe, it's not a perfect ship. Um, now that you're closer to the bronze worm, you can also see that it is heavily guarded mm -hmm. um, with Warforged wearing the East Freighton Mercantile Corporation. Fit right uniform. in. Yeah. All right, next, next in the line. Uh, next on the line would be uh, the junk ship, Nagluviet's Disgrace. Um, and as you walk up to that, that one, you can see disgrace. it's not very busy right now. 
Um, nothing seems to really be going on on it, but there's a light in the cabin on the ship itself that you can see. Oh, walk up. Is there like a gangplank that I can yep, walk up there? Yeah, you can walk up there. And knock on the cabin door? Mm -hmm. and it's a little wobbly, the gangplank. Um, it's not like sturdily anchored to the dock I love on it. the ship itself. <laughs> it's my favorite. Um, <clears throat> so you knock on the door. Mm -hmm. um, there, You hear a, a scuffling from behind the door, and uh, the door flies open, and you see a small, like you're looking at head height at first, but then you have to look down once you realize that that's where the uh, actual creature that opened the door is. Um, a small, green-skinned creature with pointed ears, uh, bald head, um, very sharp, yellow-looking teeth, um, a goblin, mm -hmm. opens the door and says, Yes! What do you want? Talk with him for a while. Uh, he is wearing <laughs> a cloak, which is immediately distinctive, because it is obviously a taxidermied manta ray. <laughs> oh, dang! Cloak of manta ray! I want from you one reason right now why I would entertain the notion of hiring your ship. We'll sail for cheap. We'll think about it. <laughs> Are you the captain? Yeah. What's your name? Mantle Ray. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. You can call me Ray. No, it's Captain Ray. Ray. Or you can call me Jay. Mantle Ray. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> What's your name? Who am I dealing with? Who are you guys? Oh, yeah. so I'm Mara. My name is uh, oh, Sir Caddy Samarlock. He kind of disregards you a little bit and looks at Mara. What you got you? the look of a sailor about you. <laughs> yeah, can, can we you sail? A, can we get a cheaper rate if, if I you help can help? Out? If you can help, I hire less crew, you can have a discount. That's good. All right. We'll make a note of it. We'll consider it. <laughs> God, I love this guy. We have to get that one. <laughs> I'm kind of, yeah, mantle ray. Right? Where are you oh sailing? Oh my gosh. It's to this. I, I have it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I put it back. I put it back in your bag. Okay, then uh, the old Patty's will take out the book and show him that. Here, this island. His eyes go wide. He's like, ah, mm, Kamekame Island. I know this place. I've been there before, Hen. Mm, I've been there. Two points in your favor. I can get you there. Easy. I even know where the best place to land is. Come come Island. Come Island. Will you be around for the foreseeable future? I don't have any jobs at the moment. Alright. Men are all up getting drunk. Yeah, I'll be here a bit. Tell me about your men. They're all good sailors. How big is the ship? And I'm not there. I'm um, it is arguably the smallest one in the harbor. Arguably, um, like, it's still comparative in size with a different one? Yeah, I mean, it's still big enough to carry cargo. So it's okay. not small. It's a cramp. But it's, yeah. Okay, got it. um, it's going to take less crew to row, part, which is probably part of why it's cheaper. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay. Shall we move on to the... Should, should we shameless even bother? Specter? Should we even bother with the bronze worm? I don't think so, do you? No. Shameless specter. Okay. You'll come back to old mantle ray. I know you will. <laughs> well, think about it. It's my favorite mantle <laughs> he, like, ray. He like goes back to his oh, table and like pulls up a, a like chicken leg and just like rips it as he watch you watches can, you go. Can I say goodbye and thieves can't and see if he understands? And he just sort of like blinks at you. Okay. What's that? All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just checking. You want to go to the park later? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> There's no parks here. That's perfect. Uh, oh my god. We have to go with that guy. Like Hunter's ears are like burning, right? I don't even know if he has ears that are burning. What would be there is burning. I guess we're not close enough to use the earrings so that I could tell you guys. We'd be 150 feet. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. we're not. They're, they're 200 feet up the cliff. Okay. And we're Trevor's there now. <laughs> Uh, and then there's the Shameless Spectre, um, which again, if you approach a dock worker, uh, this one's a female, uh, she seems to be working on unloading cargo to a different dock worker who's on the dock. Um, and she calls down to you when you're approaching and says, uh, Excuse me, uh, we're unloading cargo here. If you could stay off the ramp, that'd be great. I didn't mean, I won't, I won't be long. Uh, is your captain aboard? Uh, no. Uh, Captain Shepard 
uh, Barker tends to hang out um, in the... Oh, what's that place he goes to? The Frank. And then, like, the dock worker she's unloading to is like, The Drunken Clam! It's always the Drunken Clam, ever since we've known him. And then uh, she continues, Yeah, the Drunken Clam. You can always find him at the Drunken Clam when we're online. Appreciate it. You may okay. go back to business. So both she had them, already gone back to the business. Both of them were at the Drunken Clam. Do you want to pop in real quick? We should. Okay. So probably will do that. Um, should we stop here or should we go to the Drunken We're Clam? running out of time. I just want to know what Harmony and Hunter are doing. So yeah. as we're leaving, we're arguing about why I want the Junker. And uh, so I'm putting up a very good fight about that, I think. But I also use the earring to tell Harmony that if we get into, if we have to like talk our way out of something, that I'm gonna re I'm gonna like repeat the information that like number four oh two was like looking for a child and I'm looking for your friend's child. Okay. So if we need to talk our way out of something. And I that's can make the, the baby crying with. from somewhere exactly. again. Okay. Yes. Alright. We okay. can do that. So then where are you heading specifically? Um I don't I just, know. You know, I <laughs> I'm not making a beeline for the casino. Like that's not the only thing. No, yeah, I'm, you better, I'm not so, the gambler. So you in my head, me. Like, <laughs> fun. So you gave me the money. He said wherever, the, wherever the casino, there's like a blip on the radar, and every time I just boop, 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 boop. No, and I'm no. like constantly I mean, scanning for it, like wondering where we're gonna go that way. <laughs> it is a place that I want to check out because it's a point of interest. Uh -huh. But like, I kind of just want to walk the streets, listen to people. We kind of peek down alleys, like right. you just want to look for roads. You, no. mapping the area. <laughs> you guys are giving me so much shit right now, Roller. and I'm actually being serious for once. You guys, Roller so you're actually looking for the eyes of the world? Yes, okay. right. yes. Okay. I wasn't bullshitting you. Sorry. Perception check. Perception. Right. Check. So I'll help you look. I guess. Can I? Can I help her? Yeah. Okay. So you can take advantage. I'm helping you. Unless you want me to do it. Perception. I feel like mine's just a bit big, better than yours. Plus five. Your perception is plus five. Yeah. Then you do it. Okay, you can help me. <laughs> I'll help you. Alright. You have better eyesight. Um, I got a twenty-one. Twenty-one. Nice. Um, wandering about the city and looking specifically for people in robes <clears throat> that you recognize. I guess, like, yeah, after our travels, things that we would recognize as like Science potential. Like, yeah. Um. You don't catch any robes flitting about in dark or alleys like or anything thimblefoot like that. too. Any like thimblefoot stuff too. There's. Uh, I know that like that woman was like, oh, thimblefoot everywhere, but like you know specifically like you see like big crates that might have like warforged in it or something or like. You see wagons rolling throughout the city that are carrying big crates marked with the thimblefoot enterprises um, symbol and things like that. Um, you see a couple shops that claim to be selling the latest thimblefoot gadgets. Uh, there's definitely a lot of influence from Thimblefoot here. Um, in regards to looking for the eyes of the world and their trademark black robes, you don't see anything specifically uh, like that um, until you get towards, again, around towards the center of town near that tower, um, where you see just briefly um, a robed figure comes out and uh, speaks briefly with uh, one of the Warforged that is in the front and then goes back in. Um, and then with that perception check, as you sort of then take a minute to like stake out the tower um, and look up and down it, um, you also catch a glimpse of uh, a robed figure up in one of the higher windows. Um, and the, the window seems to be you, I think you probably have to like look through. So your could scope I, I was just to say, can I use my scope? Um, and, yeah, yeah, but uh, what you see is you seem to be looking into an office that's on like one of the highest floors, um, and there's a there's two people seated on one side of a desk, and they both have this like dark black hair, and you're seeing the backs of their heads, um, and they're wearing these like ornate robes and things like that, and, um, okay. but they have these red streaks in their hair that seem to go um, at occasional intervals. Um, and then you can see that just beyond them on the other side of the desk having a conversation with them is a robed figure. But the conversation doesn't last long and it's too far away to read lips. Um, so after a few minutes that robed figure sort of disappears um, and the two figures are left there talking to each other. Um, and that's all you see. 
So Wait, can we distinguish like any of the robes having symbols of any kind like that or anything? Uh, yeah, you, I mean, you would have seen on the one that came out briefly on its hood, it had, like the one that came out of the tower and spoke yeah. to a warforge, its hood did have the eye. Oh, jeez. I'm gonna smack him. I told you! Sammy, you, you thought I was I'm making like, shit like, up! I'm like, I mean, you don't have to explain it to me! Ugh! <laughs> I'm like, kick a rock. And it's like Hunter's foot, like ah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Stop I knew there was something fishy going around on around here. It's not just because it's on the ocean. You can smell the fish. Oh. <laughs> and on that bad pun, I think that's a good place to end. Right. I just want to know specifically where you're going next, I guess. So you two, I know, are going to the we're going to drunken the, the, clam. The drunken clam. So we said over dinner. So we're gonna. I'll meet up back at the casino. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I I don't know. Do you want to just hang out here and stake out the tower for a bit? Do you want to try and get inside the tower? Do you want to mm. wait for them before we do that shit? Yeah. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, let's just go to the casino. Then. Yeah, we just go to the casino. Let's see so if we can pick up some for gossip. You too. Yeah. Pub for you. Does Mara have any intention to visit her orphanage? No. Okay. It's been so long. I don't think I. There'd be anybody I know. That's true. Uh, in which case, I think that's where we'll end. So thank you to anyone who watched. We'll be rebroadcasting this tomorrow and also next Monday before our next live episode at 7 p.m. Pacific time. Um, so definitely come and watch that if you missed any of it. Other than that, our backlog of episodes is up on YouTube. Um, and we hope to see all of you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. Good night.